hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about cardiovascular health. As we speak right now, every minute, there are people across the country and world dying of cardiac arrest, heart attack, paralytic strokes, brain strokes, all of these issues. It's happening as we speak. Okay? The media doesn't have the habit of putting limelight on anything that doesn't benefit them. So as you saw when we went through COVID, there was really nothing else. So all the limelight of the media was on the COVID and that's why people knew more and more about it. But as we speak right now, there are diabetics who are dying. There are people with kidney issues that are dying. It's like literally, literally a lot of people dying. The point is, this is going to continue to happen unless we make a change. Because that next person to die could be your loved one, could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be you. Because we lack simple knowledge. We're still stuck in a world where our thinking is programmed by what the pharmaceuticals, the medical world, and you know, all these lobbies want us to know. The fear of blockages, the fear of heart attacks. But yet, we don't question ourselves. With so much of advancement in medicine, why are heart attacks and cardiac problems still happening so much? We don't think about this. We all think about, oh, I know the best cardiologist, I know the best hospital, I'll get treated. The point is, there's a lot that can be done to avoid these problems. And that is called lifestyle. I'm not here to tell you that if you need a medical procedure, you should not do it. You should do it. But we should have the common sense to understand what is causing this problem in the first place. You know, a lot of people like to blame it on genetics, and that's the biggest lie. Five to six percent of diseases is really, really out of your control. But the rest of it is lifestyle. You know, a lot of people live in the fear, oh, just my, my dad had high cholesterol, so I have it too. Okay, you don't have to settle for that. You have it because you have a poor lifestyle. Your dad had it because maybe he had a poor lifestyle or likewise your mom. The point is, what are you doing about it? Okay, it takes a little bit of effort to understand what happens in the human body and that can save us many, many, many deadly diseases and a lot of money as well. Today we're going to talk about the correlation between heart disease, erectile dysfunction, inflammation, bypass surgery, strokes, high blood pressure and all of these things. And we're going to understand very simply the root cause, and then we're going to talk about one solution today because there are many of them. One in five people have high blood pressure. They don't understand that this high blood pressure can be fatal to them. Just because you're on a medication doesn't mean it's going to save your life. Number two, if you have high blood pressure and diabetes, the next thing is going to be CKD, which is chronic kidney disease. A lot of people don't know that diabetes is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, for cardiac failure for heart attacks. So you can't just think, oh, I have diabetes, I'm taking medication, I have the best endocrinologist, I'm good. You're not good unless you're also making lifestyle changes because diabetes is a risk for cardiovascular problems. Let's dive straight into the human body and understand. Okay, because we need to understand you, you don't have to be here to be influenced by people. There are too many people out there waiting to get influenced. Okay, you gotta rise above being a product of social media and being influenced. You need to be inspired. Where does inspiration come from? Understanding and knowledge. That's exactly what needs to change in the world. Someone puts a post on, hey, garlic and honey is great for the heart and everyone wants to have garlic and honey. Understanding it's useless for your heart unless you are also making the right lifestyle changes. Let's dive into a blood vessel. What does a blood vessel do? It carries oxygen and nutrients from the food that you eat, hemoglobin, so they're like your little pipelines. If the pipeline is blocked, you have a problem. You can have a cardiac arrest, your blood pressure goes up. So think of a pipe in your garden, and the pipe gets clogged with mud. Now the amount of water that can flow through is lesser, because the diameter of the pipe is lesser. So the pressure builds up. That's exactly what happens in the heart, in your arteries. Okay, now in your blood vessels, the inner part of your blood vessels has an endothelial lining. I want you to understand this because this is linked with so many common problems. So the inside of your blood vessel is lined with an endothelial lining. These are made up of trillions and millions of cells. Okay, now in your endothelium, that's called your endothelium, there are different amino acids. So for example, you have an L-arginine, which is within your endothelium. This gets synthesized into another amino acid or into a gas called nitric oxide. So L-arginine, which is a 
amino acid, which is found in your endothelial lining, gets synthesized into nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas, but what does it do? Nitric oxide allows your blood vessels to relax, widen up so that blood can flow. When a blood vessel constricts and becomes hard, guess what happens? Your blood pressure increases. You have a clot buildup, your blood vessels become hard, and that's where you have heart disease, strokes, and everything coming out from that. The point is, your endothelial lining, if it is not healthy, if there's inflammation, okay, it cannot produce the right amount of nitric oxide. If you don't have the right amount of nitric oxide, think of a tire, a car. If the tire isn't filled with air, for example, you have a flat tire, the car cannot move, okay? So in the blood vessel, you need nitric oxide because nitric oxide will dilate your blood vessels, relax them, maintain the elasticity of your blood vessel so it can contract, relax, contract, relax. So like a flexible pipe can contract and relax. What happens if the pipe hardens? You cannot relax it. It starts to narrow down. Your blood pressure goes up. Okay, you have fatty cells, you have inflammation, you have a heart attack. Or a complete blood vessel can collapse. When it collapses, oxygen cannot flow anymore. You have severe hypoxia and it leads to cardiovascular breakdown or disease. That's exactly what happens. Now, what happens when you have lower levels of nitric oxide? For example, you constantly have inflammation in your arteries. Let me give you one simple example of smoking. One reason why people with cardiovascular problems should not smoke or you shouldn't smoke because it can create cardiovascular problems is because smoking causes inflammation in the endothelium lining. So now, because you smoke, you can't produce the right amount of nitric oxide. So your own intelligence in the artery is hampered. It cannot relax and your blood pressure goes up which is why smoking and high blood pressure are directly correlated and so are heart attacks and everything else. That's one example of it. Or you'll have an angina or a chest pain and you go with the shopping pain and your doctor says, okay, now we need to do an ECG and an angiogram and for the right reasons, because they're trying to check if you have a problem with your endothelial lining and you cannot produce nitric oxide. So now let's do a surgery, let's do a bypass, let's do all of these things, but the basic root cause of the problem is not fixed which is the production of nitric oxide, which is how do I develop a healthy endothelial lining? So you can go through surgery after surgery, you can put the first stent, you can put the second stent, you can put the fifth stent. The number will only increase unless you take care of the root cause of the problem, which is your endothelial lining. Your blood pressure will increase. Okay, after a while, your blood pressure medication will increase because the root cause of the problem is still not addressed. Now let's take an example. What else does your endothelial lining do? It controls electrolyte flow, which is now you have a problem of poor blood flow, high blood pressure, and also electrolytes. Electrolytes are required for survival. It's required for the health of your kidney, your heart, your brain, your energy levels, every organ in the body. But if the endothelial lining or you have an endothelial dysfunction, you affect electrolytes. And it's not just about bag and bag of saline or taking more and more electrolytes or intravenous injections and stuff like that. You have to address the root cause of the problem, which is very simple to do. The second thing, blood clots. What's the most dangerous thing that happens today? Blood clots. Because when your endothelial function is inflamed or you don't have the proper, this constant damage done in your arteries, okay, what do you think happens? Your platelets, they start aggregating to fix the problem. But when it becomes so much, you have too many platelets aggregating and now you have possible blood, blood clots, which can become so dangerous, it can kill you in a second. It can give you a brain hemorrhage, a brain stroke, a heart stroke. All of this can happen because of a blood clot, okay? Your body's forming blood clots to protect you because of the constant damage being done by the arteries through your refined oils, overconsumption of omega-6, your vaping, your smoking, your substances, your sleep deprivation, your partially hydrogenated fats, sugar, 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 refined carbohydrates, the overconsumption of carbohydrates. What do you think's happening? Forget about it making you fat. That's the least of the concerns. It's creating inflammation in your arteries. And this inflammation has to be repaired. So your immune system will divert platelets. 
Now, too many platelets will aggregate to it. And then you have, you're on medication now to break down the platelet aggregation. So after a while, you're on a laundry list of medication to treat the symptom, but you never get better because the root cause of the problem is not addressed. Okay, so basically nitric oxide acts as a vasodilator. It dilates your blood vessels, allowing blood to flow, allowing the cleanup. You need a certain amount of pressure to clean up. If I have mud, which is caked on the inside of the pipe, what do you think can flush out that blood, that the mud from the pipe? More pressure, right? So sometimes our hearts will create more blood pressure to clean out the arteries, which are getting blocked with plaque, with calcium deposits. But when it cannot do that because the arteries have become constricted and hard, the cleaning process can't happen anymore. So let's move straight into erectile dysfunction because there's a huge correlation. There are many reasons why men can have erectile dysfunction, but the main one is an indicator of your heart. And then when we have young kids coming to us or adults with erectile dysfunction problem, the first thing we want to check is their heart because there's a direct correlation. It can be a predictor for heart disease. Okay, it's the same thing with the penis. The penis gets hard or erect when there's proper blood flow. But if there's a lack of nitric oxide, the chambers in the penis, the arteries cannot carry sufficient amount of blood to keep the penis erect. That's exactly what erectile dysfunction is. And there are, of course, psychological reasons when someone's consuming too much pornography and now real life cannot excite you that much because you're always watching you know, the non-real stuff in pornography, that can also be a psychosomatic or a psychological disorder of causing erectile dysfunction. But again, it's a great indicator. So for men out there, if you do not get your morning erections, it's called morning wood, it is an indicator. You won't get it if you're sleep deprived and tired, but if you're noticing that, hey, it's been a long time since I've got my morning erection, get your heart checked. It is a huge predictor of possible heart disease, which you can catch earlier before it becomes a disaster. So blood flow is everything. If blood cannot flow, you cannot live. Your organs will start to die. Inflammation, your immune system will get corrupted completely. So you see the bigger picture now? You see the bigger picture? So now a statin alone, an aspirin alone, like I said, these are necessary if you need it, but it is not solving your problem that lifestyle should solve. So now, what else is nitric oxide great for? Muscle. If you're struggling to build muscle, because nitric oxide will allow more blood flow to your muscles. What does blood carry? Nutrients, your amino acids from your protein to build your muscle. So your muscle quality will increase. If you have a lot of muscle soreness and you're working out and you feel you have a lot of muscle soreness, people jump straight onto glutamine and all of these things. No, it could just be something as simple as nitric oxide. You don't have the right amount of nitric oxide, your muscles don't get what they need to recover. Okay, it'll boost your energy. The right amount of nitric oxide will boost your energy, your endurance, your stamina. During your workouts, during your day, a lot of people sleep well, but they're tired throughout the day. Could be an indicator of less nitric oxide. Another thing, so let's move straight to solution mode. What increases nitric oxide? Nitric oxide, number one, when we eat foods that are rich in nitrate, the body converts nitrate into nitric oxide. What are some of these foods? The richest source, beetroot. And that's why I'm a huge fan of using beetroot. Whether it's dry beetroot powder, whether it's fresh beetroot juice, it's up to you. If you've ever worked out with beetroot juice, you will know what I mean. Okay, a lot of people have coffee before their workout, caffeine supplements. I'm not here to judge you, but try beetroot. Try beetroot juice. You get dehydrated beetroot sachets of beetroot powder, mix it in your shaker with water. Your energy levels will be incredible. Why? Blood flow, oxygen, amino acids. So beetroots rich in nitric oxide. That's why all of our cardiovascular patients without complications are on beetroot. Either juice, either powder, soup, veggies, made in different forms. All your green leafy vegetables, spinach, fantastic source of nitrates, asparagus, all of the lettuce family. So your normal iceberg lettuce, your arugulas, nuts and seeds rich in nitrates pomegranate and citrus fruits, very, very rich in nitrates that will be converted into nitric oxide. Dark chocolate, 75% and above, rich in nitrates. Meat, if you're non-vegetarian, a great steak, mutton, red meat, fabulous source of nitrates. And garlic, raw garlic as well as lightly steamed garlic is a source of nitrates. So these are the foods. When you have these foods, 
That's why a lot of athletic supplements have beetroot, red beetroot extractin for nitric oxide. This is great. So now, simply, if you are a blood pressure patient, these foods are great for you. If your blood pressure is caused by stress levels, you need to manage your stress as well. But having a diet rich in nitrates will drop your systolic and your diastolic reading along with other lifestyle changes. What I'm telling you is not a replacement for your medication, but when done the right way, it can eventually become a replacement for your medication. Your own doctor will wean you off the medication because your systolic and diastolic is doing well. What else improves endothelial function? Because if your endothelial lining is healthy, it will automatically produce the right amount of nitric oxide. Okay, exercise, lifting weights, body weight exercises like push-ups, squats, lunges, aerobics, plyometrics. All of these exercises are great for endothelial function. Okay, now if you're a type 2 diabetic, you need to understand you already have damaged endothelial lining. Type 2 diabetics will automatically produce less nitric oxide, which is why when you're looking at a diet plan or an ecosystem of food for diabetes and lifestyle, it has to include the nitric oxide mechanisms to make sure that your type 2 diabetes does not make you a candidate for cardiovascular disease. It is preventable. Number one, by reversing your type 2 diabetes. Number two, if you can't reverse your type 2 diabetes, by at least making sure you're producing the right amount of nitric oxide. Now, inflammation. Let's go to COVID. Okay, science is showing us the correlation of COVID and heart attacks. A lot of explanations of the heart attacks happening today because COVID creates inflammation in the endothelial lining. So if the endothelial lining is not happening, remember the word cytokine storm that everyone got to know about during COVID? Because the cytokine storm creates inflammation in the endothelial lining. And now because there's a damage in the endothelial lining, you cannot produce the right amount of nitric oxide, which means the intelligence to dilate your blood vessels is compromised. So you see, everything comes down to root cause and everything comes down to lifestyle. Take your meds if you must. I'm not against meds. I'm against the people who think medicine alone will fix their lives. But they get stuck in a vicious cycle of chronic sickness. They are always sick and always on medication. Diabetes, you need to understand why will you have endothelial uh, destruction? Because when your blood sugar levels are high, the sugar that stays in your blood creates inflammation in your blood vessels. What does that inflammation hurt? Your endothelial linings. That gets hurt, nitric oxide, nitric oxide, you know what's going to happen. So we need to understand, and that's why when you're a diabetic patient, you're a cardiovascular patient, you're a bypass patient, all of these things, it's not about just jumping back into your life. Your sleep is important, your stress is important, your exercise is important, but your food becomes medicine. Because if your diet doesn't have the right amount of bioavailable vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, antioxidants that can repair the endothelial lining, Take, for example, a cancer patient, which is over angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is out of control when there is damage done to the endothelial lining. So, you know, I try to keep it as, sim as simple as possible, but what I'm trying to show you over here is your lifestyle is everything, okay? We do not have to accept it as humans that cardiovascular health has to get worse and worse. A lot of this is preventable because of lifestyle. Cardiovascular disease is an inflammatory disease. It is caused by inflammation. And now you know what inflammation does to the endothelial linings. So if you are willing to make these little changes in your lifestyle, your life and your health is really a choice in most cases. And that's why we try to encourage young people out there who have been misled, elderly people, whoever. If you're stuck on the smoking and vaping, okay, forget about lung cancer. Forget about lung disease. What you are creating is hypoxia, inflammation, damaging the very pipes, the blood vessels that is required for human life. It's as simple as that. That you will find justification because you want your habit to be right. You want to feel right. That's the ego, the false sense, whatever it is. But understand, okay, a lot of people talk about science and science. There's simple science talking to you in your face. There's anatomy in your face. That's what smoking does. It damages the endothelial lining. And because of that, you have all the innumerable problems that we spoke about. We have young people today who cannot get an erection. It destroys their marriages, their self-confidence and all of that stuff. And by only making one lifestyle changing, change of stopping to vape and stopping to smoke, everything gets better.
because that is the problem. Along with alcohol binging, you binge on alcohol, what do you think is affecting your blood vessels? Inflammation. So it all comes down to balance. It all comes down to certain things that we're not supposed to do and certain things that, you know, we can do, but we can do it in balance. It's as simple as that. So anyone out there listening to this today, when you hear about people, hey, I'm on a statin, I'm on this, I got angiograms done. There's one question you need to ask yourself. Okay, how much nitric oxide do you produce? Is your endothelial lining fine? Is your endothelial lining working for your arteries? Because today, if you're 30 with heart problems, my question to you is, what are you going to be when you're 40, 50, 60, 70, 80? I think you'll find your answer there. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.